Matt, thank you for your time. We've not kicked a ball yet, but what a pre-season it's been so far. Absolutely. Busy on and off the pitch. Um, plenty to discuss, and I'm, I'm hoping we can get through some of that now. Absolutely. So we'll start with season tickets. Obviously, they've been on sale now for a few weeks. We've just bypassed the, the early bird uh, phase as well. Do you want to give us a bit of an update as to where we're at? Yeah, obviously we've been trying to uh, keep supporters updated as we've hit certain milestones. We think it's important and we, uh, to be fair, as staff have been um, looking forward to seeing those numbers going up and up and up. And we're delighted that we've, you know, we've reached over 4,600 season ticket holders now and does a couple of things. It gives momentum for Darren and the team straight away. They can actually feel the support and, and see the support that they've got from from, from the supporters and, and equally from a club point of view, it gives us confidence when we're when we're planning and we're doing the planning now, a lot of it for, for the season, what it's going to look like on a match day, having um, such a, a constant and consistent number of supporters that we know are going to be backing the lads. It gives us um, a real sense of positivity, I think, going into um, what's going to be a, a busy season. But it's been yeah fabulous uh, turnout from supporters straight away um, and something that we're going to, um, really not take for granted this year, but do a, a lot of work on keeping them motivated on a match day, whether that's watching the football or actually just engaging all the stuff that we have going on. And talking of milestones, the new home kit's been on sale now for just shy of a month. Uh, we've now sold over 2,000 shirts. Just how thankful are you to supporters for, well, for their support so far with, and how well received the home shirt's been so far? Yeah, as, as always, when there's a, a shirt launch, it, it goes down um, some really well and some not so well. Um, but when you just talk the numbers, you look at the numbers again, uh, our, our supporters have been fantastic in purchasing the shirts, getting behind uh, the club, um, wanting to wear that, you know, that crest in the, in the, in the middle of the, uh, the body this time, which is, which is uh, again a change, but no, great. And you know, we've, we're really excited because we're, we're going into League Two and the disappointment all, all around that at the back end of the season, but looking highly likely now that we're going to have you know, close to five and a half thousand season ticket holders, we believe, by the time you know we, we get to the, the start of the season when you put hospitality everything into it. Um, and then to have, you know, over 2,000 uh, shirts sold with, um, again, the away kit to come. So the, um, I'm fine in saying this, aren't I, Ben, I'm sure now? Well, you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the away kit launch, so that's, that's uh, imminent. So from the, the 12th of July, the kit's going to be launched, 13th it'll be on sale, and then the 14th, we've got um, a fun run here at Vale Park, lots of fan activity going on, community activity going on, um, and you know, players involved and families involved, and most importantly, people will be able to buy the, the new away kit, so an exciting time for that. And let's talk about the work that the grounds team have put in during close season to get the obviously the standard of Vale Park pitch uh, better than ever. Mm. Obviously, the standard of the, the training pitch up and around mm. the level that we expect it to be. What kind of work's gone on on the on the pitches? Well, both set of pitches. Right? Yeah. Well, well, the, the main pitch that I can, I'm looking at right now. I think this time last year we were starting to get a little bit nervous because we did a lot of work last year on the drainage and. Um, the growth of the grass coming back through, we were, we were worried what it was going to end up being like come first game of the season. This year we've again done quite extensive work, so sort of phase two of the, the whole rebuild of the, of the main pitch, and that's included a sprinkler system that's gone in, uh, which, which has absolutely given uh, us the opportunity to uh, water the pitch timely, so, so really help the grounds team, and it will help the, the team as they move forward because we can keep um, keep the pitch watered and, and fed as much as we like so we're not dictated to by obviously the gods and um, we, we can actually look at it ourselves and um, so the pitch again will be improved and I think it was much improved last season anyway but the, the bulk of the work has actually been on the training pitches this year so getting them up to a standard that is consistent with our main pitch um, to help with training to help with injuries to help with just that um, the, the week to week training schedule for the players so it you know the look and feel of the pitch out on the training area when they get to a match day they can feel that consistency so we've spent money and, and time and research on that and Steve and the lads have been fantastic in making that happen. And a topic of discussion with the supporters throughout last season was the, the toilet block within the railway mm -hmm. as well. Can you give us a bit of an update on how, that, how that's looking as we head towards Yeah so that's on track um, it's being built as we speak um, it will be ready for the season um, hopefully ready for the pre-season games, but not a 100% guarantee, but definitely ready for um, you know, our first home game. So yeah, we'll be 
all, all good and on track and it'd be great to see that sorted. And as we look around the stadium, it's looking brilliant as we head towards next season. Obviously, we, we have volunteers here every day. Mm -hmm. What would your message be to them as obviously the, the word that they've put in throughout close season? Yeah, well, I've spent a bit of time with the volunteers, to be fair, over this clo close season when you, you see you see people in and around the ground and you see the effort and the work that they put in, whether that's um, painting, whether that's sweeping, whether that's doing some pointing, whether, whatever it is, without the, the time and effort that those supporters and volunteers put in, the, the ground doesn't stay in the shape that it does. You know, it's an, old, it's an old stadium, we can't get away from that, so it needs some love, care and attention every, every pre-season. And, and we're really lucky here at the club that we have supporters that are able to, to give the time to do that. So, yeah, it, it, money can't buy it, literally. And it's, you know, they do a fabulous job and we're very, very grateful at the club. And over the next couple of weeks, supporters can expect the supporter engagement plan to be released from the mm -hmm. club. Can you give us a bit of an update on how that looks, what that includes, uh, and just mm -hmm. elaborate on a bit more for yeah, us? Yeah, so it will be the first time, of, um, from what I know anyway, that the, the football club is um, giving a, a commitment to supporters in terms of engagement. We've done a lot of talking, we've done a lot of talking, I personally have done a lot of talking, how we, we want to engage with the supporters more, but this... This plan will be, it'll be visible, it will hold us to account, it will make sure that we um, deliver for the supporters and that's, that's what the essence of the club's about. So we'll be listening to supporters and we'll be absolutely putting their views and opinions at the centre of our decision making. It's not always going to be the decision the supporters want but we're going to make sure that that supporter voice is um, heard. Um, part of the plan is that we will be creating a, a supporter advisory board so that will be a board independent obviously. Um, and it'll have a, a voice direct into myself, direct into, into the owners, where um, that group will be the voice for supporters. Um, there'll be a, an application process and a, and a recruitment process, again, independently about what that looks like. That will come out over, you know, imminently over the next couple of weeks. But it's something that I'm really proud of the football club in, in committing. We've got commitment right from the top all the way through that we know we, we want and need to put supporters at the heart of the decision-making, particularly around you know, that match day experience, the heritage, what Port Vale is about. So we will be doing that and I'm excited about it. And as part of that supporter engagement plan, I know you've been looking internally at what that structure looks like inside the club. There's been a few changes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so as always, at the end of the season, we, we, we review everything. So we've done a, a full review of um, our structure and we've just made, made some tweaks to ensure that we have got designated roles for supporter engagement, that we've got people, I guess, in the right places. One thing that um, I know here is that we've got a, a group of staff and a group of volunteers that only want the best for Port Vale. Um, so it's just been realigning some of the, the priorities, I guess, of, the, of those staff and making it a little simpler and clearer what, what we're all here to do. Um, we've set some and we'll be really open with supporters through the, the, the engagement plan that they'll see some club objectives. And those club objectives will be transparent and we'll hold ourselves to account for that. And me personally, I'll hold myself, um, you know, make myself accountable for those. And, yeah, we're, we're, we're in a, a bit of a sweet spot at the moment in terms of how we've, how I feel anyway, that we've, we've listened, we've consulted, we've now organised ourselves. The hardest bit is then delivering it all, but that's the bit that um, I'm most excited about over the next 12 months. Uh, let's talk about recruitment. We've had a number of new faces through the door, mm. most recently Connor Hall coming back mm -hmm. from Colchester. Mm -hmm. How happy are you to date with the recruitment that's gone on? Since the um, season. Obviously delighted. I think we, we had a meeting at the end of, end of the season about what we want Port Vale to look like. And one thing that uh, we all agreed with, and this was from obviously Carol and Kevin right the way through, was we wanted a connected club. And that's a connected club internally, but a connected club with our supporters and community. Um, that got um, lost somewhere along the way over the last couple of years. Um, and the pull and the push for us has been actually recruiting people that are uh, living Port Vale values, so having people that are um, high, you know, high performers first and foremost, but they are the good people, um, they, they have the right values, but they have a, a bit of a grit and a determination and, and we want leaders across the club and that's both on the pitch and off the pitch and I think you're kind of halls, but also a lot of the, you know, all the signings so far, I think we've seen the personalities that we want coming in and that's what I've been um, most delighted with and the way that we've um, obviously set up the recruitment now in the first team so, so Darren ultimately um, has the final say on who's coming in and who will be going out but we've got a, a club-wide approach now so that whole 
uh, recruitment of the the types of players and people that we want in the club is driven by you know driven by the club and it, it, it again it feels good at the moment and obviously with so many players coming in the door is there any kind of movement on players going the opposite way yeah of course there has to be um, a balance for a number of different reasons so one, one thing that again Cavill and Kevin committed to uh, when we had the conversation was there was never going to be a, a one in one out scenario we wanted to make sure we didn't miss out on targets that we wanted we wanted to make sure that we got a, a squad ready uh, for the start of pre-season it was something that as a, as a club and definitely Darren and Champion trying to get people 1st of July so yesterday that we've got a, a group of people ready to go from day one so we, we've committed to that Naturally, um, we'll have to look at squad numbers. So I'm sure Darren won't want to work with a, a squad that's unmanageable in terms of size. And equally, from a budget point of view, we'll have to make sure that financially we can uh, we can balance it. But there isn't any um, you know huge pressure on that. But we we definitely know that there'll be some outs as there'll be some ends and things will. Um, start to take shape as we head closer to the season over the next few weeks. And as well in, as, as well as bringing new players in the door, we've seen a number of academy players offer mm. pro deals and signing the pro deals. We've got Jack Shorrock, Andrew Boer, Aaron Davies. How happy are you to see players from the academy making that step up into the first team? It's um, it's one of the most important things for for a club like us, for a club like Port Vale, with our um, commitment to community, uh, but also commitment to, to young people and what we and what we believe we should be doing we should we believe we're a club that should be giving chances um, but not giving chances for people that don't deserve it giving um, and these players that we're seeing coming through and the, all the ones that you spoke about and some more um, have earned the right um, and again as, as a group we've spoken about giving our young players the opportunity when they've earned that right and it's so satisfying I'm sure it's mostly satisfying for for parents families and, and, and well rider in the team but from a you know from a club point of view it's great to see a group of young players that um, feel proud and privileged to, to pull on the white shirt to Port Vale and I think that's something that um, we've definitely looked at this season and I'm, d I'm so excited to see some of them you know get running around over the next few days. And after the conclusion of last season, I know there was a few question marks around the week by week publication of a match programme. Mm. Obviously, that was something that was being revised following the conclusion mm. of the season. Mm. Have you got a bit of an update on that at all and what's to come? Yeah, as I you know, just spoke about sport engagement, we'll definitely, as always, commit to, talk, to talking and to consulting. I think the programme, uh, there will be some uh, communication to supporters over the next few days. Um, being brutally honest, as I'm always going to try to be, uh, the programme currently, you know, it's cost us over £30,000 consistently um, a year for the last three seasons. Um, we've only sold, you know, just over 100 programmes on average um, every league game, um, even less, I think, in cup games. So it's something that, um, from a viability point of view, you know, we, we, I think we will struggle to... Um, to to keep going in its current in its current guise, obviously options around um, special games and you know certain landmarks of either the club or players or people or whatever. There's always that option of bringing the program back for sort of special occasions and things and what it looked like. But but yeah, so I'm, we, there will be an opportunity for supporters to send in comments, send in concerns over the next few days. But it's a yeah, it's definitely something that we we have to look at. Um, from a from a finance point of view, but obviously operationally as well. Um, we've got some lovely singing in the background. Will Kinson, we give him a shout out. Um, <laughs> he's seen as well. Um, and then, yeah, I think the the other bit just to add to that is the is the website and app. So I think we're we've our content is going to change we're going to be more in control of our content the creativity of our media team you being one of them is fantastic and it's um something that we want to amplify over the next 12 months so actually having the opportunity to keep doing that and deliver that i think is really important everyone's going to think we've paid you to say that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now the lads are back in the building uh, they've been training for a couple of days now and i was a couple of days away from pre-season kicking off properly uh, properly mm. Tell us how that pre-season looks. Obviously, we've got a, a tour coming up. Yeah. We've got a, a few friendlies this weekend against Newcastle yeah. Town, Kids Grove, and a few more over the next few weeks as well. Yeah, I think, you know, again, done a great job in, in updating supporters on where we're at. So in terms of the, the schedule, I think there's a couple of things. I think this, this Friday and Saturday will be uh, predominantly first team. So, you know, you're going to see um, a lot of first team players, or even of all the first team players at, um, at Kids Grove and at, and at Newcastle Town. There's then a... Um, a much younger team, um, full of you know a lot of the lot of the scholars and, and younger pros at Leek, um, and then yeah, following that we've got a, 
a, a lot of a lot of games and Darren wants to get minutes and legs and make sure people are match ready and we've wanted to make sure that we give our supporters an opportunity to see um, to see the players it's something we've maybe missed and build some momentum going into the season so the two home friendlies I'm extremely excited about we've um, we've confirmed the friendly but the details um, just to be sorted with uh, Burton Albion as well so a trip to the Prally Stadium which is you know just up the road so we're going to chance for supporters to go and those that want to to go and see the team and see how it's starting to shape up and um, and, a, and a UK tour so we've obviously the last couple of years we have we've uh, been to, to Spain and Portugal I think um, this year going to go, we are going to South Wales and uh, friendly against Bath City which again supporters are, will be will be able to go and watch so it's going to be different I'm excited by it because there's lots of lots of games lots of lots of time to start seeing how the lads are taking shape um, and lots of time for the for the supporters to start feeling that as well and selfishly two home games that gives us the chance to test um, all the new things that we're implementing so like the toilet block the t ticket master uh, the website the app all the things that were uh, the new food um, offerings and systems that we're putting in a couple of games to test that which is fantastic for, for the football club and just how much are you looking forward to getting going welcoming fans back in Vale Park and getting going next season it's um I can't tell you how excited I am because it's been such a busy period since the, since the end of the season and you you quite quickly you're so busy but you start you miss the, the football bit you miss the supporters you miss the you miss the buzz of why you, you you're so lucky to be involved in in football and yeah I can't wait for for Friday can't wait for that to get going love the local games I love me as you know love me me, me non-league and my local football anyway so looking forward to those games and then yeah just getting getting the season underway and I uh, just want everyone to start hopefully feeling that feeling that connection and Let's have a, a really good 12 months together as a football club. Matt, thanks for your time. Thanks, Ben.